Smart fans, welcome back. Today we're looking at using Google Earth Engine in QGIS. This video is the first of a three-parter and we're going to be looking at how we can put together what is playing on your screens right now. To do this, we're going to use three tools. We are going to use Google Earth Engine. We're also going to use some code and then we're also going to use QGIS Atlas. It's quantum, baby. Let's get stuck in. The first step in our road to GeoGiffery is to get Google Earth Engine working in QGIS. And to do this, you need to be working with QGIS 3.8 or higher. Today, I'm working in 3.10, which is the latest long-term release, and we get all this fun stuff up when we open it up. We're very lucky that a Google Earth Engine plugin has been created. So if we go up to our plugins menu, and then manage and install plugins, we can hit all and we can start typing Google Earth and you'll see that the Google Earth Engine plugin appears. There is more info, you can go to the homepage, bug tracker, etc. We'll have a look at the homepage in a minute, but for now we are going to install the plugin. Now this might take a little time, so why not make a cup of tea? Once the plugin is installed, you'll see the old familiar logo and if we go to our installed plugins there it is and let's just clear that search box so you can see it in context google earth engine now you might be wondering where is google earth engine on my toolbars do i have a google earth engine toolbar available no you do not this is run entirely through python so we don't need any interface changes at all once you've installed the plugin it will check to see whether or not you are authorized to use google earth engine and you might need to go to Google Earth Engine homepage and just hit the sign up button here, fill out your details, and then you can be signed up. And it says here that for my email address, I'm already signed up, so that's all good. In order to authorize QGIS to use your account, you'll need to follow a link and then put a code in. It's all pretty simple and fairly straightforward. If you feel like you do need any extra help, you can always leave me a comment below and if you go up to your plugins and go to Google Earth Engine and hit user guide that helpfully takes you right to the home page of the plugin itself. So we need to test this out and make sure that it's working. Again if we go up to plugins we need to open up our Python console and here it is the good old faithful. To start off with we'll try and import the Earth Engine library and we're just going to do import EE. Hit enter, and that's gone through without any problems at all. If there were any problems with installation, that import statement might throw an error like this. And I have noticed sometimes that if I close QGIS and then reopen it, I do have to go up to plugins, have a look at my available plugins, and just switch on Google Earth Engine again. And if you do that, then your import statement will work without a problem. Now, if you read through the home page of the plugin, there is a second import statement that most of our scripts are going to need, and that is from ee underscore plugin import map. And let's just try that one out. That's also working. Excellent news. Now, rather than working in the console all the time, I prefer to use the editor. So don't forget, you can hit that show editor button and it will open up. So I've just put this import EE and from EE plugin import map into my editor. And if I run that, you can see over in the console, everything is working. Now, when I first started looking into this, I searched for Google Earth Engine and QGIS and came across this blog post, which was very helpful from Geodose. So thanks a lot for putting this out, guys. They walk through the installation and you can see here as well about choosing an account and getting authorized, all good. And down here, we actually have some sample scripts. So I am going to be very cheeky and just copy this and then we're gonna stick it in to our QGIS Python editor. Here we are back in Q and if I just pop that in, then we have code from Geodose that's ready to run. So let's get ready to run it. And up here, we just hit run script. Over on the left in the console, we can see it running. And in our layers panel, we can see a false color composite appears. 
And currently we can't see anything. Now this may well be a problem with the zoom. So if we get some bearings here, let's just go down to coordinate and type in world. And that brings up our world map. And you can see that we zoomed right out. Not sure why this is happening. But I believe that what we brought in was San Francisco Bay. So if we use our powers of jog, we can zoom into San Francisco Bay and see that false color composite come to life. Fantastic. Now what we've done so far, let's be honest, is copied and pasted code into an editor and then it's produced stuff. And let's go back something I always like to do and have a look at what the code is actually doing. So we've got a variable called image and we're going to bring in an EE image that is Landsat LC08. So I imagine that is Landsat 8 and it's going to be top of atmosphere and this looks like we have got a date in there. And then we're going to define the visualization parameters and so we've got bands 5, 4 and 3. Um, these are going to be the min and max values and then we're going to put a gamma stretch on it as well. Now the map center doesn't seem to be working at the moment uh, because we are not zoomed in. So I'm just going to try. These look like the coordinates for sure. And then with the zoom, that looks like that's going to be the end item. So let's try this again with a zoom of 20 and see what happens. And it's run again. And you can see with a zoom of 20, it has zoomed us right in. So it's always quite fun when you're working with code just to change some things around and see what happens. For example, instead of false color composites, we can change that to false color composite for map fans. And if we run this code again, we are zoomed right in. And you can see that we have added over on the side a different title for that particular layer. We're still zooming into 20, which is not very useful. Let's try that again and zoom into 10. That looks a lot better. And we can run this time and time again. One of the beauties of working with code. Now over on the left, you'll notice that we've got the false color composite in there and the one that we created again, the false color composite for map fans. Now, if you do save your QGIS project and you've got some layers that have been produced by the plugin. The QGIS install that you're working with will need the plugin installed in order to load these layers. So just keep that in mind. And what else can we do with the Google Earth Engine plugin? The answer is a lot. And if we go back to the Earth Engine website, you can get into the data catalog and view all of the data sets that are available. And there are loads. Now, which one were we using for the gift that we had at the start? And it's actually one from the Sentinel 5P. So let's have a look at using that. Once you've allocated the data set that you're interested in, you can read a little bit about it. Sentinel 5 precursor and when it was launched, what it looks at. And here I'm looking at nitrogen dioxide in near real time. So let's just click on that. This will open up the data set page. And here we can see the provider. We've got a little Earth Engine snippet. So I'm just going to copy that for the time being. And then let's have a look further down. We've got a description. We've got the band's image properties and the terms of use. And down here, we can explore this in Earth Engine. Now, you might be looking at this code and wondering why it doesn't look like Python. Well, that's because it isn't. It is in JavaScript. And you'll find with a lot of the Earth Engine examples that they are written in JavaScript. Now, I copied the collection for the Sentinel 5P, and I'm just going to plonk that into here. Just so I can see what's happening, I'm going to change the name of the layer to my 5P test. And then we're going to hit run. What do we think is going to happen? Is it going to work? No, it is not going to work. And that is because we've got an image collection here. We need some extra parameters in there. 
Now back on the Earth Engine catalog page, we can see what else we need. We need to select what we're going to select from this particular image collection. We need a filter date and we should probably change our band viz as well. So there are a few things that we need to change. Now this code currently doesn't look a lot like Python and it isn't. It is in JavaScript. In part two, we are going to have a look at how we can convert JavaScript code into Python so that it plays nicely with QGIS. I think that will do us for today. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, you can leave a comment below. Been getting some good comments recently and I do try my very best to get back to all of you as soon as possible. Keep an eye on the prize. This is what we're aiming to create and tune in next time to see how we can convert JavaScript to Python. And happy mapping.